Jessica Yellen is in the briefing room. Uh, only a few seconds away, right, Jessica? Uh, yes, he should be out here any moment, Wolf. We'll be looking to hear if he says he's reached any kind of a deal with Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid, with whom he's been meeting here at the White House. Uh, if he has uh, hopes for some kind of deal after Christmas, we'll be looking to hear if he is announcing any plans for his travel to Hawaii. Uh, and also, maybe whether he'll comment on the uh, statements we heard from the NRA, the National Rifle Association, a totally different topic, uh, when they held their co press conference earlier today their statement today, Wolf. Interesting. All right, uh, sit down, uh, Jessica, because the president's going to be walking in momentarily. I always find it interesting on a Friday, late Friday afternoon, a statement like this is about to be made, statement uh, being made after the uh, Wall Street, after the markets are closed uh, in New York uh, and elsewhere. Uh, whatever he says about these fiscal cliff negotiations could have a significant impact on Wall Street, on the markets, on public attitudes. Maybe that's one of the reasons why he decided to wait until after 5 p.m. here on the East Coast. Uh, so the president uh, will be walking in momentarily. Uh, Dana Bash is up on Capitol Hill watching what's going on. It should be, uh, they said two minutes a, a while ago, but I guess he's still walking in, uh, uh, Dana. Uh, the markets took a little bit of a hit today after what John Boehner failed to achieve last night. Uh, here comes the president. Never mind. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Over the last few weeks, I've been working with leaders of both parties on a proposal to get our deficit under control, avoid tax cuts or avoid tax hikes on the middle class, uh, and to make sure that we can spur jobs and economic growth. A balanced proposal that cuts spending but also asks the wealthiest Americans to pay more, a proposal that will strengthen the middle class over the long haul uh, and grow our economy over the long haul. During the course of these negotiations, I offered to compromise with Republicans in Congress. I met them halfway on taxes, and I met them more than halfway on spending. And in terms of actual dollar amounts, we're not that far apart. As of today, I am still ready and willing to get a comprehensive package done. I still believe that reducing our deficit is the right thing to do for the long-term health of our economy and the confidence of our businesses. Uh, I remain committed to working towards that goal, whether it happens all at once or whether it happens in several different steps. But in 10 days, we face a deadline. In 10 days, under current law, tax rates are scheduled to rise on most Americans. And even though Democrats and Republicans are arguing about whether those rates should go up for the wealthiest individuals, all of us, every single one of us, agrees that tax rates shouldn't go up for the other 98% of Americans, which includes 97% of small businesses. Every member of Congress believes that. Every Democrat, every Republican. So there is absolutely no reason, none, not to protect these Americans from a tax hike. At the very least, let's agree right now on what we already agree on. Let's get that done. I just spoke to Speaker Boehner, uh, and I also met with Senator Reid. In the next few days, I've asked leaders of Congress to work towards a package that prevents a tax hike on middle-class Americans, protects unemployment insurance for 2 million Americans, and lays the groundwork for further work on both growth and deficit reduction. That's an achievable goal. That can get done in 10 days. Once this legislation is agreed to, I expect Democrats and Republicans to get back to Washington and have it pass both chambers. And I will immediately sign that legislation into law before January 1st of next year. It's that simple. Averting this middle class tax hike is not a Democratic responsibility or a Republican responsibility. With their votes, the American people have determined that governing is a shared responsibility between both parties. In this Congress, laws can only pass with support from Democrats and Republicans. And that means nobody gets 100 percent of what they want. Everybody's got to give a little bit in a sensible way. We move forward together or we don't move forward at all. So. Uh, as we leave town for a few days to be with our families, 
for the holidays. Uh, I hope uh, it gives everybody some perspective. Everybody can cool off. Everybody can drink some eggnog, have some Christmas cookies, sing, sing some uh, Christmas carols, uh, enjoy the company of loved ones. And then I'd ask every member of Congress, uh, while they're back home, to think about that. Think about the obligations we have to the people who sent us here. Think about the hardship that so many Americans will endure if Congress does nothing at all. Just as our economy is really starting to recover, and we're starting to see optimistic signs, and we've seen actually uh, some upside statistics uh, from a whole range of areas, including housing, now is not the time for more self-inflicted wounds, certainly not those coming from Washington. And there's so much more work to be done in this country on jobs and on incomes, education and energy. We're a week away from one of the worst tragedies in memory. Uh, so we've got work to do on gun safety, host of other issues. These are all challenges that we can meet. They're all challenges that we have to meet if we want our kids to grow up in an America that's full of opportunity and possibility as much opportunity and possibility as the America that our parents and our grandparents left for us. But we're only going to be able to do it together. We're going to have to find some common ground. And the challenge that we've got right now is that the American people are a lot more sensible and a lot more thoughtful and much more willing to compromise and give and sacrifice and act responsibly than their elected representatives are. And that's a problem. There's a mismatch right now between how everybody else is thinking about these problems, Democrats and Republicans, outside of this town and how folks are operating here. And we've just got to get that aligned. But we've only got 10 days to do it. So uh, I hope that every member of Congress is thinking about that. Nobody can get 100 percent of what they want. And this is not simply a contest between parties in terms of who looks good and who doesn't. There are real world consequences to what we do here. And I want next year to be a year of strong economic growth. I want next year to be a year in which more jobs are created and more businesses are started. And we're making progress on all the challenges that we have out there, some of which, by the way, uh, we don't have as much control over as we have in terms of just shaping a sensible budget. This is something within our capacity to solve. It doesn't take that much work. We just have to do the right thing. So uh, call me a uh, uh, hopeless optimist, but I actually still think we can get it done. Uh, and with that, I want to wish every American a Merry Christmas and uh, you know, because we didn't get this done, I will see you next week. Sir, All right. Sir, Thank you. Sir, Thank you. All right, uh, so the president made his statement. He uh, made a, about a seven-minute statement, to be precise, uh, saying he didn't think the sides were too far apart. He thought that they could at least get a stopgap deal uh, that would allow uh, taxes uh, for the middle class to remain as they are right now. Let's get some... Uh, Go up to Capitol Hill. Uh, Dana Bash is standing by. Uh, I didn't hear anything new from the president right now, Dana. I, this is a proposal he's had out there for some time. Just you know, pass the legislation that allows the Bush tax rates to continue for everyone making under a certain amount of money. He used to say $250,000, raised it a little bit to 400000 But uh, that doesn't look like it's going anywhere, at least for the time being, in the Republican majority house. That's right. You know, we laid out in this program, uh, according to sources here, three potential scenarios for the way forward. Uh, one was going off the cliff and two was uh, kind of a fallback scenario. What he just laid out was that fallback scenario that Democrats here are talking about. And what I mean by that is uh, just to try to get s some Republican votes on his bottom line when it comes to tax rates, and we're just talking about tax rates here, uh, keeping Good taxes low for the middle class, but also adding some tax weeks, rate sweeteners. He, he talked about unemployment uh, insurance, which is not necessarily sweetener for Republicans, but maybe adding estate tax, keeping the taxes low on that, and a few other things. 
So what he's saying now is he wants to see if the speaker can get enough votes. Maybe they can get enough votes from Republicans in the Senate. But let me give you a reality check. As we were talking, I was going back and forth with a, a Democrat who knows where the votes is are, are in Congress reminding me that it is very unlikely that that's going to happen, very unlikely that they're going to get bipartisan agreement, particularly on what the president just laid out, which is effectively, as you said, his position on taxes. Let me go to uh, Jessica Yellen over in the briefing room at the White House. Uh, Jessica, whatever the president puts forward, I assume almost all the Democrats in the House and the Senate would support it. But in the House, you need a whole bunch of Republicans to support it, as well as some moderate Republicans. Uh, do, does the president think that Boehner will bring along enough Republicans to pass this kind of temporary legislation? Look, well, they're worried about Republicans in the House. I I've talked to Democrats who are also concerned that Republicans in the Senate will be hard to bring on board because they have concerns about their uh, re-election uh, next year and outside groups, pressure from outside groups as well. I mean, there's no absolute confidence uh, that we will not go over the cliff. Um, that's why you heard the president make what was essentially a um, political appeal here, a messaging appeal um, to say, look, uh, an appeal for common sense, an appeal for uh, action, because this is really now about uh, trying to reach beyond us to the American people. He was talking to the American people, not to the people in Washington or to, in this room, and saying uh, this is about the, that a reasonable uh, compromise is within reach, and if it doesn't get done, it's only because of, in his estimation, extremism in Washington. That's the message they're trying to put out there. Wolf. Looks like everybody's going uh, at least out of town uh, for Christmas. Uh, they'll be back presumably later in the week. The president, uh, I suspect, heading out to Hawaii with his family at the same time. Uh, all right, stand by. Uh, everyone stand by. We'll continue the breaking news coverage. Uh, we'll also update you on what's going on as far as the National Rifle Association is concerned. Their proposal today to put armed police officers in every school in the United States. We'll go to Newtown for the latest on the investigation. Much more of our coverage right after this.